today I'm going to be talking about life hacks. I, uh, I love to, to watch videos and stuff where people do things that you're like, what in the world? I never thought of that. That's a great idea. Like they use um, other household goods to make something way easier or um, to help you get something done better, or faster or whatever. And there's some really, really cool videos out there with that kind of stuff. Um, but not all of them apply to everybody. And I wanted to bring you guys some stuff that's going to apply to all of us. To all of us. Um, and these things will just simply make it easier on yourselves. I've All these things that we're going to be talking about today, I have experienced in my life. And you know, as you grow and you, you get older and, and you experience things, you become more mature, you look back and you go, wow, I could have done that way differently. I could have saved myself a whole lot of trouble, a whole lot of heartache, a whole lot of hardships or whatever. And, and I pretty much always wish I would have learned it way sooner than I did, you know? And... The things that we're going to talk about today, you can start applying them at any point in life. No matter when you start applying them, they will make life easier. They will make life better. And so, uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that today. Before we do, let's, let's just pray real quick. Heavenly Father, help us to put these life hacks into, um, into play in our own lives. And let us just represent you well in everything that we do. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yesterday I had the absolute privilege and honor to be able to, um, to do the celebration of life for Dan Kehoe and uh, meet his family and stuff. A lot of you guys already know them. Um, I didn't. Um, and I've only been here for a couple of years, and so I didn't have that opportunity. But being able to hear the family talk about him, and his, especially his kids, you know, like whenever they were getting up and talking, I'm like, man, I hope and pray that that my kids have the the good memories, that they have the takeaways from from my life, like his kids did. I mean. It's, uh, it was just such a, a blessing, and they have 11 kids. <laughs> you know, that's, that is a lot. That is a quiver full. And, and, uh, but God says that that's an absolute blessing. That is a blessing. You know, I'm watching my family grow, and uh, friends and, and boyfriends and stuff like that. Hey, Nick, one of them's here today. His name's Nick, right there next to my middle daughter, Kyrie. If you haven't met him, that's Nick. Stand up, Nick. Say, say hi. There you go. Somebody said, or Lonnie said, I'm keeping an eye on you, Nick. I said, me too. But um, no, nah, he's great, and and it's so cool to be able to to see how God brings people into your life, you know. And I didn't know how I was gonna react having my daughters having boyfriends. I thought, well. I'm going to get in a lot of trouble. That's, that's literally what I thought growing up. And, uh, and now I'm like, well, how can I not get in trouble? No, I'm just kidding, Nick, but really. But no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. We probably better move on. But yeah, that was a huge blessing for me yesterday. Uh, absolutely huge blessing, and, and uh, hopefully I get to know the rest of your family a whole lot better. So thank you for letting me be part of that. I'm going to have three different sections. They're not necessarily points, but they're three different sections. And the first life hack that we're going to talk about is forgiveness. And people are like, oh, man, here we go. Um, 
Do you have somebody in your life that you don't want to forgive? I bet you do. I, I, I have in my past. I bet even if you don't now, you probably have before, right? Probably before. And if you've, if you've started to understand how beneficial it is to follow God's instruction in actually forgiving people, how freeing that is in your life, that is absolutely freeing. It's absolutely freeing. So, the definition of forgiveness is to give up resentment or claim to compensation or retaliation or to grant relief from payment of. So let's talk about that for just a second. To give up resentment of? Has anybody ever done anything that you resent? Done something to you or maybe something to your family that you resent? A family member? That's the hardest to let go of. I'm water off a duck's back if you do something to me, but you do something to my family, that's much more difficult to forgive. Much, much more difficult. But it's still necessary. It's still necessary because it still causes the same thing. Or to give up a claim to compensation or retaliation. That last part, the retaliation, that's huge. Believe me, I could be extremely good at retaliation. Um, I really could be. But that's not what God's called me to. I'm skilled in that area, but it's not what he's called me to. I'm trained in that area, but that's not what he's called me to. He's called me to forgive for my own good. No matter how hard that is, it's for my own good. He knows what's best for me. He says, vengeance is mine. I will repay. He will repay. Do you ever get frustrated if the time that he repays isn't in your time frame, though? I have. I'm working on it. I'm a work in progress, if you will. I think we all probably are. And the grant relief from payment. Has anybody ever owed you something and you're like, you know what? I'm just going to go break some legs. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that payment back. <laughs> yeah. Good. I'm, I'm glad it wasn't just me. I got at least one hallelujah. The rest of you are like, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> Matthew 6, 14 and 15 says, For if you forgive others when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. <clears throat> but if you do not forgive others their sins, your heavenly Father will not forgive you your sins. Isn't it nice to just kind of focus on that first part and not read that last part? So easy to just skip over that last part. But guys, that's, he said that last part, again, for our own good. He said that last part so that we will benefit. He lets us know, listen, I love you. It's so important for you to do this. Because if you don't, I can't forgive you. And you might say, Nathan, pff, what? God can do anything he wants to do because he's God. No, he can't. That might get under some skin right there. It probably will. But God can't step outside of who he is. God is righteous. God is just. He is merciful. He's kind. He's loving. But he can't step out of his own nature to be something different. God doesn't forget things. He casts them as far as the east is from the west. He can't forget because he's all-knowing. There's, 
There's a few things that God can't do. I'm not going to get into a, a whole big theological discussion about it, but I do want you to think about it, and, and I probably will come back to this on a topic later, just so that we can really understand it better, but, but God can't be something that he's not. God is love. God is not evil. He's not... Um, yeah, we'll stick with evil for now. We'll stick with evil for now. God requires us to forgive, but he doesn't expect us to do it alone. He doesn't expect us to do it on our own. Because he gives us the Holy Spirit. He gives us the ability to do all things. Philippians 2.13 says, For if it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose, it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Isn't that good news? That's super good news. Then if you scroll down to Philippians 4.13, obviously we, we probably all know that. For I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength to do them. Sometimes if somebody hurts you really bad or hurts your family really bad, it's like, I can't forgive. No, on your own you can't forgive. There's a ton of stuff you can't do on your own. But with God... You can. Like the rich man trying to um, find out from God, I've done, all these, I've done all these things. What else must I do to get into heaven? And he says, sell everything and give it to the poor. Come and follow me. And the man left brokenhearted. And then the disciples say, well, if that's the case, who can get into heaven? And Jesus says, for man, it's impossible. <laughs> You can't on your own. But with God, all things are possible. You can forgive. You can with God's help. Acts 24, 16 says, I also do my best to maintain always a blameless conscience both before God and before men. This is Paul talking. And listen to, listen to the... The words that he says there, I also do my best to maintain always a blameless conscience, both before God, he puts God first, and before men. He does his best. God wants you to do your best. And when your best isn't enough, he wants you to rely on him and his strength and his ability to accomplish the things that he puts before you to accomplish. And we bring up Forgiveness, this life hack of forgiveness, because if you hold on to that, it's going to rot you inside and out. You will rot inside and out. Forgiveness, it also doesn't mean that you agree that what somebody did against you is not wrong. That's not what it means. That is not what forgiveness means. Somebody's hurt you. Somebody's hurt your family. Forgiving them doesn't say, it's okay. No, it's not okay. No, it's not okay. But it is okay to forgive. It means that you release the bitterness out of your heart against them for that wrong. That's what forgiveness means. You release, you release them over to God. It's like if, if Somebody did something illegal against you, stole something, and you have them still in your garage. You caught them red-handed. And then the cops show up, and they're like, he's coming with me. You're like, no, he's not. No, it's releasing them over to the law so that the law can deal with it appropriately. That's what God is saying. Don't hold on to them in your heart. Don't hold on to them. Let me take it. Let me take care of it. I'm going to deal with them appropriately according to my laws and my standards. And he will.
Aren't you thankful that, that you're not who you once were? One thing that's, that helps me to be able to forgive somebody is knowing that people have had to forgive me. Knowing that I've done things wrong to people. That I've hurt people. That I need people to forgive me. I'm not perfect. Haven't been. I've been made righteous through Christ Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But I've done things in my life that, that haven't been right. That haven't been right by people. And I need forgiveness. I'm going to be going um, out of town here before long. And, and I knew that an old friend of mine's relative lived in this uh, town that I'm going to. And it's quite a ways away. And so I reached out to him, said, hey, man, I, um, I'm going to be in your town at such and such time, and I'd like to reconnect if that's at all possible. And he shoots a message back like, are you kidding me? We're not friends. Do you not remember such and such? And I'm like, no, I don't, actually. And he was, for years and years and years, he harbored something against me. We had a, a run-in whenever, um, way back, whenever I was in law enforcement, and he was a teenager, a kid. And that he held on to that for a long, long time. And I was just like, what in the world? And so he said some pretty rough things. And I, I really wanted to respond out of my flesh. You know, like that was the first thought, unfortunately. I'm just being real with you. The first thought was, well, fortunately, I didn't, I didn't do that. <laughs> but um, but I, just, I just talked with him through it, like, and he got a lot of stuff off of his chest. But by the end of it, I was able to apologize for, for that offense. Um, and he believed that I was somebody that I'm not. And, and back at that point in time, I was a whole lot more like that somebody that he was talking about, um, that he perceived. But one way or another, that was his reality, whether that was who I was or not. That was, it was who I was to him. But now, fortunately, um, you could just tell the sense of relief uh, in our conversation through the end of it. And we're going to have an opportunity to make amends in person. And that's great. You know, I've always loved this dude's family. And uh, he's a good person. So, we've got to forgive. If you forgive, you will be better off. I promise. The next life hack is gratitude. Gratitude. So we've got forgiveness. Now we're moving into gratitude. Now I will tell you that it's easy to become complacent and greedy. Super easy. Like, that's, that's a thing of the flesh. It's so easy to become complacent with who you are, what you have, whatever, and then become greedy for wanting more. But that will, that will catch you up like quicksand. That will get you in this rut of always me. If I only had this, life would be so much better. If I only had more money, life would be so much better. If this, if that, if this, if that. That's not true. It's not true. Look at all the super rich people, right? The, the actors and actresses and all this stuff, they're always trying to find something to fill this void. They always, they want more, and they're miserable, a lot of them, a lot of them, because more and more and more doesn't mean better, better, better. It just means that the problems that you had here are a lot bigger now. They're much more amplified over here once you get all that. God wants us to be 
content. He wants us to have gratitude, to be grateful for things. It's hard to be in fear or complain when you're grateful for what God has already done for you, for what God has already given you. When you're grateful, it's hard. It's hard to be um, constantly in fear. Psalms 107.1 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, and His steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. His will for you is to give thanks to Him. That's His will for you. Why do you think that's His will for you, though? So that He'll feel good because you're thanking Him? No. It's because that will change your whole life. If you change that perspective and you're grateful for what God has given you, not for, for something that you've lost or, or anything like that, if you're thankful for what God has already given you, and I'm not just talking about material things, guys. Think about it. We, we support this, um, this kid over in Ethiopia, and he's as cute as can be. I can't believe how big he's getting already. But we think that, that we need more. He needs more. His family needs more. They need more over there. When we're like, oh, man, we're getting low on groceries. Our low on groceries is not his low on groceries. It's not your low on groceries. I promise. It's not. If we take a, a true evaluation of what God has given us, where we are with our, with our uh, material things, guys, we've got it good. But even if we had nothing, he still sent his son for us to die on a cross for us so that we can have relationship with him forever and go live in a place where God paves the streets with gold. He paves the streets with gold. <laughs> I heard a, a, a preacher say the other day, I was listening to some teaching, I can't remember who it was, but he was talking about how, how God has all the wealth, all the wealth. There's no way your mind can wrap around it. And and he tells the story, he says this guy, uh, he died and he went to heaven and he was able to sneak in a bag of gold bars. And he gets up there to the gates, these ginormous pearly gates, right? And old St. Peter, who, I don't know if Peter's actually going to meet us at the gates. I mean, whatever, if he does, that'll be cool. But he probably, he maybe has other things to do, like sit on one of the 12 judgment seats and judge the tribes of Israel. But... But anyway, if he does meet us there, so be it. And he, he says to the guy, he says, what's in the bag? And the guy's like, oh, I brought, I brought this gold. And Peter says, you brought pavement? <laughs> you know, like, God doesn't need your gold. He doesn't need you to bring gold to heaven. So... Yeah, I, I, I got a kick out of that. Our gratitude, our gratefulness. The word says in Psalms 118, 24, it says, This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Michael, I'm going to have you come up here in just a minute. Um, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. That is a decision that you make. This is King David talking, saying this is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. If I'm not mistaken, and I could be, because I've been wrong before, but I'm pretty sure that this was written after his son decided to try to overthrow his, his kingship and become king himself. 
David went through a lot of stuff. But to have your own son turn on you, turn the whole nation of Israel against you, and try to become king himself, and run you out of town, that's a bad day. But David's decision at this point is, this is the day that you've made, God. The day you've made. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. Because you made it and you made me. And whatever you decide is what's best for me. I love it. It's, man, when we wrap our minds around that. And then Psalms 100, verse 1 through 5 says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful song. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving, and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and praise His name, for the Lord is good, and His love endures Forever, his faithfulness continues through all generations. Have you ever been in a place in, the, in your life where things, you know, they were just like, they were just weighing on you hard? Things at work, friendships, relationships, whatever it is. And then, and then God starts speaking to your heart and he says, hey, remember me. Remember, remember that I love you. Remember that you're in this world right now and hearts are still going to break. Bones are still going to break. Things are still going to go wrong, but not forever. You're only here for a real short time. And then hearts don't break. Tears don't shed. Bones don't break. You don't have a bad time. You get to be in the presence of of the Almighty God forever. And He starts to just help you to shift that mindset, to change your mind, to understand that, that it's okay. It's okay. He's got me. He still loves me. Michael, would you come up and share with everybody what you shared with me this morning? The last couple of weeks have been, um, I won't say they've been hard, that's, that's not, but it's been a lot of contemplative thought. Um, tomorrow will be eight years from my wife passing, and um, there's just been reminders. I don't know how many of you go, I don't get on Facebook very often, but it seemed like I caught a couple of these things that I posted eight years ago during the, the last few weeks of her being on, on earth. Um, and it just caused me to think again about how good God was to me and how precious his presence was in my life during that time. And it's, it's, a um, there was a reminder also, um, I don't know how many know the, the manager, the lead pastor at Bethel on California, Bill Johnson, his wife passed away recently and he, he preached her service just a few days after she died. And, and uh, Deb, Deb was there. I, I, I preached, or I, I oversaw Lori's funeral service too. And so there's so many things that he shared that God showed me eight years ago. And it was like he was saying, see, you were listening. You were, you were hearing my voice. I was talking to you then. You weren't the lone person out there. Because I, I, I don't know of anybody else that, that had gone through and the way that God brought me through that. And one of the things that was brought up is that there's, there's two scriptural ways to mourn. Okay? Blessed is he who mourns, for he will be comforted. And then there's the mourning that is like the disciples, men of God, 
followers of Jesus, right? But they were mourning his death. Mary saw the risen Lord. And she comes running to him and says, I've seen the Lord. He's risen. And they didn't believe her. They were in mourning and they didn't believe. They were in mourning and they lost their faith in that. So there's two ways and it's a choice. Trust me, it is a choice. We, can, we have the ability to choose which way we're going to go. We can choose to fall in the arms of the comforter. <laughs> or we can choose to fall into unbelief. And he, 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 he doesn't want that for us. That's not his, his will for us. Because he, when he did come back to the disciples and they saw him, he reprimanded them. So you, a little faith, where, what the heck are you doing? Don't you believe? Didn't you have, trust what I said? Basically, that's kind of paraphrasing it. But we have a choice. We have a choice in a lot of what we do. And uh, sometimes I know that life, uh, this, this last couple of weeks, it seems like every time I would be thinking about this and God was showing me stuff that, that reminded me of things that he had worked in my life and, and all that, that life would come at me. And try to distract me. The enemy does not want us to dwell on the things of the Lord. So fall into the arms of the comfort. I just encourage you to do that. It's, it's not too late. It's not, it's not the, um, there's still time. Just repent and let the Holy Spirit comfort you. And he will. Trust me. He will. So Michael was talking to me about that this morning. I'm like, man, that is powerful. Um, And talking about gratitude, have you ever been through things in your life similar to that that are really, really difficult whenever you're going through them? You don't think you can handle it. You don't think you're going to be able to make it through. But then looking back, hindsight, you go, wow, I wouldn't change that. Because of what God has done in me, to me, through me, to people around me because of that, because of that testimony now. Because now I can, I can minister to, witness to, help other people. You know, even the hard things, we can still be grateful for them, for the fruit that God produced in our lives and in other people's lives because of it. Some of those things, it's like, would I go back and change it? I don't, I don't think so. There may be some things that I would go back and change. But everything, God uses all things for the good of those who love him. Not just good things. He uses all things. The good, the bad. So that's why he says to give thanks in all circumstances. Because he knows what, what's going to be produced over here. He knows what these things that you're going through are going to generate. He knows what's going to happen. And if we trust him that he is a good, good God, which he is, then we can trust that he's going to take this nasty, hard situation that's breaking us, that's shredding us apart, and use it for good. And it really helps if we keep our mind and our focus on him and remember that this is just a season. Things are going to change. If there's one thing that's for sure, things are going to change. They are, absolute. So that's life hack number two. We had forgiveness. We had gratefulness. And now we have giving. Matthew 6, 21 says, For whatever... Wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be also. God wants our heart. He wants your heart, boy. He gave you the heart in the first place. And he wants it. Because he truly does know what's best. He says, I know the plans that I have for you. And he declares, I know the plans that I have for you. There are plans to prosper you, not to harm you. My plans are to give you a hope and a future. Those are my plans for you. 
And when we give, it, it, it blesses his heart and it blesses our heart. It blesses us. You know, whenever I was a kid at Christmas, and uh, adults would say, it's better to give than to receive. And I'm a kid going, I don't think so. No, I don't. Uh, maybe you've never received. But receiving's really good. I like it. <laughs> you know? But then the older I got, and the, the ability to be able to give my kids stuff and that they want and see their faces light up, it's like, I would take that over getting anything ever for the rest of my life. It is better to give than to receive. God does that because, like I've said before, we're made in his image and in his likeness. And he's a giving God. Think about it. He gave us the sun. He gave us beaches, islands. He gave us mountains if you love mountains. He gave you woods if you love woods. He gave you air to breathe. He gave you blood to pump. He gave you your heart. He gave you your mind, your eyes. He gave you everything. He's a giving God. He gave us his son to take our sins and our shame. We always focus on the sins. He also gave his son to take our shame so that we can be with him forever. Then, after that, after that, we get to be with him forever, and he sends us the Holy Spirit to be our helper, to help us with everything, to, to be God in us. That's a giving God. Yeah. There's nothing better than that. Nothing better than that. And it was given to you. And then he says, you take it and give it to other people. But the cool thing is, you give it away, but you get to keep it too. How awesome is that? It's like that bread dough that everybody used to make, you know, and you keep a little bit and you give it and, you, and it just keeps going. It's the bread that never ends. It's also delicious. I don't know. I love bread. It's, it's not like that. It's way better than that. It was the only thing I could think of. Sorry. Luke 6, 38 says, Give and you will receive. Give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more. Running over and poured into your lap, the amount you give will determine the amount you get back. That's the Word of God. The Word of God. Give and you're going to receive. Should you give with the heart to get back? Is that giving? No, that's giving begrudgingly. But when you give with a heart to give because you want to give and you want to love on people, you want to bless people, then guess what that does? That makes your heavenly Father go, Oh, I love it. I love it. Look at my, look at my kid down there. They're doing exactly what, I, what I've taught them to do. They're being like me. They're giving. They're giving away. Because they trust and they know that I'm going to give back. I'm going to give it back. If they're willing to give it out, I'm going to give it back. Of course he's going to give it back. Of course he's going to give it back. That's what he does. This, I'm going to reread that again real quick. And then I'm going to ask you another question. Give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you give back. In that quote, did anybody hear the word money? No? No? Nobody? Me neither. Why is, that the, why is it that that's what we think of very first thing? Does it apply to money? Sure. 
it applies to everything. This applies to everything. It's not just talking about money as we usually think that it is. But I want to point out what it what it is talking about. What's the reference talking about? The very verse before that, that's why I said take the content and put it into context. What is he talking about right before that? So verse 37 says, Do not judge others and you will not be judged. Do not condemn others or it will all come back against you. Forgive others and you will be forgiven. That's the verse right before what I just, re- what I just read. Give and it will be given unto you. That's the context that this is coming in. But Jesus is laying out multiple layers here. Okay? He's telling us, don't judge other people. Don't condemn others. It's going to come back on you if you do. But forgive other people. So if you don't judge, if you do judge, what happens? You get it back, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And the amount that you give out will be given back to you. If you put it into context with forgiveness... If you forgive others, to the amount you forgive will be given back to you, pressed down, shaken together, running over, poured into your lap, forgiveness. If you give money, it'll be money. If you give love, it'll be love. If you give of your time, you're going to get time. That's God's principle here. That's what he's talking about here. It makes you reconsider what you give doesn't it? Makes me reconsider what I give. I've experienced this in my own life in multiple different things. In a lot of bad things. Until, well, I'm still learning, but it's a lot less in the bad things these days. Thank you, Jesus, and thank you to my wife. Um, Because she's really helped me with this a lot. And still does. But it's also happened in in good things. Lots of good things. Um, We have... We've given away... I I hate talking about things that we've done, but... um, We've given away a lot of vehicles. And God gives them back. We've given away... Money. And... And I was listening to Robert Morris the other day, and he was talking about three types of giving um, financially uh, to the church. And he was talking about there's tithe, there's offering, and then there's offering that hurts, you know, like the excessive offering that you know God's telling you to give, that he wants you to give to see if you're going to be obedient in it. And it was just interesting how he laid that out. He didn't put that in the same category as offering, you know, just giving. Like he's talking giving so much that it hurts. And laying those three different things out, Brittany and I have, have been able to experience God tell us to give something. And in a financial sense, he told us to give something at, at one point in time. Told me and told her we were in church next to each other, and he tells me this amount, and he tells her this amount, and I'm like, that can't be God. <laughs> That's ridiculous. You know, there's no possible way. And then uh, I don't remember if she told me or I told her, but one of us said, hey, I feel like God's telling us to give. And, and uh, then we, we said, all right, well, what's the number that he's telling you? And it was the exact same number. I'm like, oh, man, wow. Um, Okay, I was thinking maybe I was just being a little extravagant. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, but what, we've, what we got to watch happen that day is we both came into agreement and just said, whatever, whatever you want, God. And we wrote the check. And before we left the church that day, somebody else walked up to us. This is so weird. Like, walked up to us and gave us a huge check for a ministry that we were doing. I'm like, what in the world? This is nuts, man. But it's God, you know. What you give 
He gives back, but he presses it down, shakes it together, runs over, pouring in your lap like, guys, he wants to give you the good, so give the good. He doesn't want you to have to experience the principle of getting the bad back that you've sown out to. But it's a principle, and it's going to happen. So choose the good to give out. The more you choose the good to give out, the more you're going to get back that's good. And, and here's a good rule to live by. They call it the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, right? Think about that in, in everything that we're talking about here. In forgiveness, in gratitude, in giving. If God, if you feel God telling you to give something, whatever it is, time, whatever, whatever it is, consider giving extravagantly. I'm not telling you to give above what he tells you to give, but if he just says give and doesn't tell you how much to give, then maybe he's going, what's my kid going to do here? Because I know what I want to do for my kid. What's my kid going to do? What decision are they going to make? And you know the principle. So however you want somebody to treat you, put yourself in, that other, in the other situation of receiving that. And that's you. Give that way. See what happens then. Sorry to put you on the spot. I don't know if that's personal, but they give cars away constantly. Yeah, four or five. Do you have a... Did you drive a car here? Imagine that. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> God is good. You know? We could go through here. I'm looking around. We could easily go through here and just have a testimony Sunday. We should probably do that at some point. Really soon. What do you think? We should definitely do that. And just, and just go through these examples of what God has done in our lives according to his principles. Speaking of giving, Jesus gave us this free gift of salvation. The Father did, and we talked about that through the Son. He gave us his Holy Spirit. He gave us the opportunity to have eternal life with him. He feeds us. He's given us so much. He, he always takes care of us. So what should we give? I want you guys to think about what you should give, but there's, there's one thing that, that we absolutely have to give, that we have to give, and that's love. We have to love others. We've got to be willing to love. That is God. God is love. And if we're going to represent him at all, we've got to, we have to love others. It's easy to love the lovable, right? You know where I'm going with this? Maybe not so easy to love the unlovable. But Jesus came to love the unlovable. He, I'm living proof of that. He loves me. And he's turned me like him. We were all probably somewhat unlovable at certain times. You know? We should give of our time to people where God calls us to give. We should give of our possessions. The word says if you see someone without a, a cloak... And you have two and you don't give to them, you're sinning. We should give our money. We should give to those in need. We should give our tithe to the church. We should give offerings. Just a real quick side note. You can't give your tithe. It's not yours. It's God's. You bring the tithe into the church. You bring your tithe 
God's tithe to the church. Because everything that you have is His. Everything was given to you, and you do it in faith. I am going to, to teach on that probably sometime soon. Because it's extremely important, and the benefits that you receive from giving, especially financially, um, they're, they're huge. But the tithe is required. You know, 3 to 5% of all Christians tithe? 3 to 5%. Let's put that a different way. 96%, 95 to 97% of Christians don't tithe. They don't follow God's law and bring back to Him what He, what he requires. That's that's amazing. That's amazing to me. Now, the reason that that's amazing to me is because I lived that, and then I started giving what God requires, and then I got to see the fruit and the benefit of that. I have not missed a meal since I started, other than ones that I chose to miss since I started. Like God's always taken care of. He's always provided above and beyond. Some other things that he calls us to give, that we should give, are our wisdom. Pass along to people God's, God's wisdom and knowledge, especially if the Holy Spirit is speaking through you to, to speak to somebody else. Pass that along. Healing. God calls us to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out demons. He calls us to heal. He will get the glory for that. We should also give hope. If you love people and they're, they're hurting, they're in despair, give them hope. Give them Christ. Give them the opportunity to have eternity with Him. I could go on and on about giving because I love to give. I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite things. But what I have was a free gift to me. And what I've freely received, I should freely give. And what you've freely received, you should freely give. When you give, do it expecting nothing in return. Don't expect something in return when you give especially from, from the person that you're giving to. You know, God says, even if somebody borrows something from you and they don't return it, don't. You don't need to ask for it in return. That's a tough one. It's like, well, I might not loan this out then. <laughs> you know? But he says, when you give... Don't require anything in return. Don't expect anything in return. I'm going to close with this, but these life hacks, forgiving, being grateful, and giving... Guys, they will absolutely change your lives. Lots of lives in here have been changed by those things already. Guys, but we're all a work in progress. We continue. Every day, we should continue to strive to be more like God, to try to please Him more, to try to love Him more, keep our eyes fixed on Him more. So I want to ask you to ask yourself, what is the Holy Spirit saying to you today through this message? And I know he's saying something to somebody because I had a totally different message prepared this morning. Jerry, did I not? <laughs> we were talking about it yesterday. I'm like, I think this is what God's telling me. And then this morning, nope. And I, I had that feeling he was going to change it up on me. And he totally did. So what is the Holy Spirit saying to you today? Even if it's just one little takeaway from this, think about it. It may be difficult for you. It may be something that you've been struggling with, something that, you've, that God's been 
kind of tapping on your shoulder saying, hey, this is what I want, and you've maybe been kind of brushing it off. Like, I didn't, uh, what was that? That was, that was nothing? No. He's driving at home. Whatever it is, he's driving at home. If there's anything that, that you want prayer with, uh, prayer for, we're getting ready to have one last worship song, and you can feel free to come up, um, and we'll pray with you. Um, if you want us to come to you, we'll come to you and pray with you. The elders will be up here and stuff, too. Um, I want you guys to remember Pastor Rod and Glenna and Rod's mom. Uh, Rod's mom's in the hospital right now with uh, some COVID symptoms, and Pastor Rod is, is uh, getting over some COVID symptoms, too. So um, just be praying for them. Let's all stand together and, and just pray for him. Yes, sir? Absolutely. Come on up. When Brittany was sharing earlier, uh, the vision she had, the picture she had, I could see that in my in my mind. I could see the the running. I could see the the God giving the good for where you're at right then, but not forever. One time thing covering everything. You know, it was really it was really good. But at the same time, I got another picture in my mind when she said that about God goes before us and God is behind us. A picture of four warriors, and there was one was wounded. It was like I was the I was the one that was wounded, and there was one that was helping me, helping me up. And in front of those two, there was someone watching the front, and then there was another one going backwards that was watching the back. They overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony. It's like the blood of the lamb was watching the attacks of the enemy coming from behind. And God was preparing the way before us, and the Holy Spirit was comforting us in our wounds. And it was just a a picture that that came to my mind right there of of that that whole concept of God's there with us. He's there. If we let him, he's there to watch our back. He's there to prepare the way, and he's there to comfort. Thank you. All right, well, let's just close in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, that you always give us your word to help us to understand you better, Lord, to help us to relate to you, help us to see how you want us to move forward, how you want us to live our life, God. And God, I just pray that your Holy Spirit will continue to speak to us and uh, speak through this word. Lord, I pray that you will just touch our hearts and help us to continue to grow in these areas and continue to make you proud and continue to become more like you. God, as we go out of here today and we go out into uh, into our areas of influence, Lord, I just pray that you will just give us opportunities to be able to love on people and to share your love with people and to show them who you are and just bring them in to, um, and to have a relationship with you, God. Lord, we love you so much. We pray these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.